Hey guys, today's April 1st, 2009. I'd like to talk about two stories um, on how I was fooled or uh, fell for the prank. Um, you know, it's really interesting to see the world that we're living in today. How, you know, five or ten years ago, strong um, companies, newspaper publishers, and also uh, magazines that were just solid are now having to close their doors and or they're really struggling struggling and they're in a lot of debt. Um, one magazine I'd like to talk about is Electronic Gaming Monthly and uh, on two occasions I fell for their April Fool's joke. Uh, the first one that I fell for was in 1992. Now at the time Street Fighter 2 was like the biggest video game uh, um, of all time. It was so huge. It was in the arcades and uh, at the end of one of the issues, uh, I never got the subscription, but I usually would get it every month, which I should have got the subscription now that I think about it. I would have like, saved a lot of money, but every month I'd go to the newsstand and pick up a copy of Electronic Gaming Monthly, and I was just so into games like I am today. And uh, I remember at the end of the issue for 1992, for the April issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly, at the end of the issue, it had how you could unlock a secret character, Shang Long. And uh, I had pictures of him. I included um, a link that you can check out um, for it. was done pretty well. You know, Photoshop was done during that time, but not as easily as it was today. And so anyway, it said basically if you took your character and played the entire game without getting hit um, and then fought M. Bison, um, you would have to not be hit by M. Bison, but also you could not hit M. Bison. And you'd have to wait for the time to run out. And you'd have to do that multiple rounds until finally Shang Long would come in and uh, toss um, M. Bison out of the picture. And you now have that unlockable character to fight, Shang Long. And uh, this actually took the world by storm. Uh, a lot of people... Um, in the UK and also in China and, and other countries saw this uh, April Fool's joke from EGM and a lot of people tried to do it and uh, including myself. Um, I went to the arcades, you know, there was an arcade close to my house where you, you'd get six tokens for a dollar and uh, I played that game so much and I was able to maybe get to four or five or six characters without getting hit at all if I was lucky. And uh, it wasn't until a month later, I think it was in December or the December issue of EGM, when they announced it was a hoax, it was a joke. So, uh, you know, here you had hundreds of thousands of people, including me, seeing this and trying to unlock, you know, virtually it was impossible. You had to go through the entire game of Street Fighter 2 and not get hit at all. That's, like, that's impossible, unless the difficulty level was, I mean, even then you wouldn't be able to do it, uh, you know and also with M. Bison not being able to get hit or hit him. Anyway, that was the first time I was fooled by EGM. That was a great prank. And I guess every year after a, several, you know, EGM was known for their April Fool's jokes. But anyway, for a while I didn't play games. Uh, there was a couple years where I took a break and then I got back into games. And there were other magazines I was really into like Die Hard Game Fan. Uh, one of the big things why I read EGM is because, you know, they had Sometimes they had some really good coverage on the imports or the games that were out in Japan, and that's what I really looked for. And there are other magazines that seemed to do it even better than EGM as time went on. But anyway, the second time I was fooled by Electronic Gaming Monthly was the April issue um, in 2005. And uh, basically what it was was it showed a picture of the new Zelda game that was coming out. And at the time, in 2005, for this issue, the world didn't know what the official name. It wasn't called Twilight Princess. It was just called like The Legend of Zelda, the new Zelda game. And uh, so basically what this this prank was, was that it said that if you go to your local game retailer and pre-order a copy of this new game, this new Zelda game, you would get a free copy of Zelda Wind Waker uh, with updated graphics and it actually had a side side by side comparison. You know at the time I had finished uh, Wind Waker you know was, had a lot of fun with it but then saw that it had updated graphics. Wind Waker you could now play with Twilight Princess graphics. Now the thing with the Wind Waker's graphics they are great for what they were. I played tons of, 
of Wind Waker for the GameCube, but to see an updated version of the Wind Waker was available with updated or realistic graphics uh, that you could get for free for the purchase or pre-order uh, this new Zelda game. I was very excited about that. So I ended up telling a few of my friends. They got excited about that. I think a couple of my friends actually ended up pre-ordering it, thinking they were going to get this uh, updated copy of Wind Waker for free. <laughs> I went to the game, a couple of game shops and was telling them about it, and they hadn't heard anything about it. Um, so anyway, I, as it came about, it was an April Fool's joke for Electronic Gaming Monthly. So EGM, they got me again. So there you go. Uh, basically for this video, I want you guys to do maybe a re comment or response video. Let me know what's the best prank uh, that you were able to do to someone else or maybe the best prank that you fell for that you thought was really good. And uh, it doesn't have to be game related and it doesn't have to be on April Fool's. But anyway guys, thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you later.